There's a lot of virality happening in the country music world on social media at the moment. Songs that are popping off, getting millions and millions of streams extremely quickly. And so I thought we'd look at five acts today that are going super viral and just talk about them, react to them, listen to the music, get a vibe, and you know, think out loud. First person I want to talk about is the artist formerly known as Yodel Boy, actually named Mason Ramsey, who's 17 now and has a song called Blue Over You. I love now, if y'all remember way back in 2018, Mason went crazy viral for standing in a bow tie and singing Hank Williams' Lovesick Blues inside a Walmart. That video took over the internet. Yodel Boy was everyone's favorite. He got added into like an Old Town Road remix with Lil Nas X. And then the people around him rushed him into putting out all this music, including songs like Famous. My girl, ever since I met you, I got a whole new perspective. Which to this day is my highest dislike ratio ever on a video. Because I was expressing some concern of like, whoa, we are rushing this kid way into stardom and having him work with all these like huge producers and pop writers really quickly. Is this gonna be good for the kid? And people were like, why are you crushing his dreams? And I was like, I'm just being a concerned internet big brother. But really I thought those songs were strange because I'm like, the whole thing that made this kid go viral is he clearly likes traditional country music and now we got him singing FGL cuts like Famous and I feel like it's abandoning the whole premise of his virality. In subsequent years after that, Mason put out songs here and there like Twang. But you lose me for my twang. And before I knew it. Before I knew it, I was holding on the doors, holding on. Which did embrace a little bit more traditional instrumentation, a little bit of yodeling. And then he's had some kind of mini viral moments of him working in Subway and things like that. But something feels very different with the release of Blue Over You because this song is just excellent. I would It's got Steven Sanchez vibes, it's got Elvis vibes, it feels very 60s inspired. His voice sounds great and a good bit deeper, you know, we do all go through puberty. Ugh, I hate that word, I hate the word puberty. I also hate the word gland. And to me this actually feels like the most substantive music viral moment that Mason has had since the original Walmart video. Because people are enjoying this song as a song not as a funny shtick. He wrote it with a guy named Dan Hernandez and it has this country politan feel and a lyric about losing someone and being blue over them. Now I've been watching the Spotify streams of this and it started off kind of with a considerable amount of interest but in the last few days it is soaring, racking up hundreds of thousands of listens each day. And I'm excited if this is kind of a new direction for Mason. And it's crazy to even say that, to even think of someone who's 17 years old as having had eras of his career already but hey, I didn't go viral when I was like 12. But anyway, I'm pleasantly surprised that Mason has been out of the spotlight as much as he has been in the last six years, been able to be a normal teenager, been able to not be living on the road and just kind of the instability that that would cause in these formative years. And if what we're getting at the other end of that development is music that is surprisingly sophisticated and that is connecting with people in such a big way and a more mature vocal and perspective, we all win, don't we? So I'm happy for Yodel Boy, Yodel Man. Yodel Young Man, in fact. Next up is a song called Austin by an up and coming artist named Dasha. Did your boots stop working? Did your truck break down? I kind of thought we were past the days of TikTok dances being the thing that drove virality. The app kind of blew up with teenagers dancing, but that feels very four years ago. And then all the pop stars started to be like, here's the official choreo to do for dances. We're gonna teach you today how to do the sangria wine dance. Sangria wine dance. Sangria wine dance. And the kids were like, ew, that's so lame. Y'all are trying to market these dances now and get us to do them. And it kind of fell out of style. But whether it was Dasha herself or her team or whoever made up this freaking line dance for Austin, it's kind of the current hot girl dance to do on the app. Did your boots stop working? Did your truck break down? And the song people are dancing to, Austin, has subsequently gone extremely viral. I remember first looking at this song two or three weeks ago. It had close to a million streams and now it's at 15 million, and her monthly listeners are at 2.8 million. I didn't even film this that long ago, and these numbers are so out of date. Now she's at 6.6 .6 million monthly listeners, and Austin's at 32 million streams. So, it's big. 
The song's kind of a you did me wrong song and she's telling this guy like, what's your alibi? You know, I'm going back to LA and you'll be drunk in Austin. But with this kind of Western guitar lick and this very literal boot stompy beat, it has these kind of country touches. Although I would say fundamentally, structurally, this is a pop song with country elements or country elements if you are Dasha and like to remove the O. I know just from living in Nashville how all the labels are all fighting over like who's gonna get Dasha, how are we gonna sign her, how are we gonna ride this viral moment, but listening to her album that came out like a month ago, it feels to me like she wants to be a pop star. The sound to me is much more in this Jesse Murf lane where there is some country elements in pop music, but maybe I'm wrong and she'll turn around and throw out a Lainey Wilson album. That's not to say the songs are bad, I'm very into that song, King of California. I'm like, look, all y'all can rage over Austin, but King of California and that fiddle part going through it, that song's a jam. And now I'm gonna go clean my kitchen because people are coming over here in 20 minutes and it's dirty. Okay, I'll be back in a second. Somehow it's been six days since I filmed the first half of this video and uh, you know, life happens. I put on the same shirt for the life of me. I cannot figure out how to relight this all the same, but I'm just sitting in a new place and leaning in. But anyway, the next act I wanted to talk about is Ol' 60. Late night, wide away, late here Old 60 is a band out of Kentucky. They make really kind of like Southern fried rock music. I think you could compare them to Cage the Elephant, which is sort of what everybody says. Uh, I could hear some Whiskey Myers in that mix. And they put out an EP last year that has recently started to go super viral, especially the song Smoke and a Light. Oh, anybody got a smoke and now I'm often talking about how, look, artists, you have a phone, you can put this out and you can film yourself singing, but maybe the pendulum is swinging in the direction maybe of more high quality visuals because I would certainly say that these really nice videos and reels that have just been all over social media in the last few months are driving this song and it's becoming something that's taking on so much momentum and becoming a huge hit, or at least huge in our little indie underground country space. And the songs are good, they're cool, they're young, they're kind of messy. I mean that mostly emotionally, but a little bit musically too, but it just has that kind of vibrant spirit about it. Like I love the melodrama of a lyric saying, I'll be sitting here writing songs about whiskey and cigarettes and wishing I was dead. It's kind of got that young man's spirit of like a little bit of internal violence and frustration. It's boy melodrama. But if their newest song they just put out, Brother Joe, is any indication, they're willing to go into some kind of cool, weird, lyrical waters. Brother Joe never had a lie. He became a man of God. It's a story song in which a character named Joe is this godly preacher who's deeply in love with this woman. And ultimately, when she is killed, he decides to put a bullet in his head. But like the way you get there is cool because you think he's gonna seek revenge and then ultimately when it is a suicide, it just kind of adds a whole other texture into the song. And it's a real tale. There's a lot of lyrics in this song and I like seeing these young guys do something so different. Their album's been up near the top of every big streaming chart for like an hour. It was number one on Apple Music, which Full disclosure, I found weird that it was only number one for a teeny, 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 tiny little bit, and then it went back down to like number six or seven, which is still amazing. Felt suspicious to me, I must say. Although I do not know how such machinations could occur, but part of my contract with you all is I say the things that I think, and that's a thing that I thought. In any case, they are certainly organically rising. I can always judge from my DMs and the amount of people that are like, I'm so into Oil 60, I love it, it's cool. It's like an Appalachian Southern rock version of kind of Cobro culture from down in Texas, but I like it over here and I'm so pumped to see where they go. The next guy going viral is named Tucker Wetmore and he has this song called Wine Into Whiskey. I took a good thing and I turned it into good bye. Took the fire. I've actually followed Tucker for a long time because he did some really cool covers back in COVID times when I was just on TikTok too much. And TikTok is to thank for this song becoming huge out of the gate. I just ain't the type of soul you say. But she tried. I don't know if he deleted old music or if this is truly his first release, but it's the only song up on his Spotify and it is massive. All of the internet says, oh, this basically sounds like Morgan Wallen and you know, it's not lost on me that Tucker sort of presents like Morgan Wallen did two years ago with a little bit longer hair and the mustache. And it struck me thinking about that, how I'm surprised there's not more people that look and sound like Morgan Wallen. Like I feel like the name of the game in country is when something is huge 
everyone chases that sound. That's exactly what we saw after FGL blew up. And I feel like that's exactly what we saw after Sam Hunt blew up. But that kind of hasn't happened with Morgan Wallen, to be honest. I feel like there's a lot of people that have sort of been inspired by Zach, but Tucker is the first one I can really think of where I'm like, damn, this is clearly a similar kind of sound as Morgan Wallen. Dip through wings in Tennessee, brown turn to call me. Not to be so reductive. I mean, the song does work melodically. Even if it's not your style of production, that's a bit of an earworm. Took a good thing and I turned it into goodbye. And I'm sure to some extent, Tucker finding a way to lift up his shirt and show off his abs in every single video is also helping it get views. Can't you? Ear with some Sauvignon Blanc in her glass. You know, you gotta work with what you got in this life. But he just doesn't have enough music out there for me to make any kind of interesting statement about him. This is truly one where I'm like, here's the thing happening. Look, everyone, I talked about it. And then I wanna dip back down on Beyonce's Texas Hold'em. This ain't Texas. Which obviously I already have a whole video about country music's pop star era where I talked about this, but it's had a few more weeks now to kind of percolate through the culture. Like Beyonce for as famous as she is, hasn't really had an out of the gate smash like this in a while. And we'll see where the year goes, but this may very well be the biggest song of the year. As of today, it's around 150 million streams on Spotify. And Beyonce has announced that her next album will be called Act Two Cowboy Carter. Dolly Parton even recently said in an interview that she believes Beyonce has cut a cover of Jolene that will be on said album. And country fans remain fiercely divided about the song and just about Beyonce in general. There's the people making the sonic argument, the nerds like me that are like, I would say this is kind of fundamentally a country sounding pop song, same way I said about Dasha. There's some people making the racist argument. I've definitely seen that in a lot of comments and it's just like, guys. But I would say way more country fans just feel this kind of elitism, like, man, we were country when country wasn't cool. And now that it is cool, all these people want to throw on a sparkly cowboy hat and then they're going to go on their way. The song has raced up the pop charts. It's pushing top 10 at pop radio now. Although on country radio, although it jumped 20 spots in its second week, it started at number 54, then it went to number 34. It's now had two or three weeks of declines. And now it is way up at radio again so everything I said after this is kind of irrelevant but still interesting so I'll leave it in but this is why I don't like making videos about stuff happening in the news right now because by the time you're even done with the video it's irrelevant and I just I kind of hate this whole video this is why I just want to make like more broad video essays because I feel like this whole freaking video feels just like dated and lame and like I'm chasing something rather than leading I don't know I don't know I hate this video. And country radio is all run around testing and they play songs, they see how audiences respond to them through like telephone surveys. And if people have a high negative response to something, it will drop in airplay. The goal for programmers is just to get people not to change the station in that 20 minute drive that they are going from home to work. And so anything that sounds out of the ordinary is gonna make them more likely to just press the number three on their dial instead of the number four, which is why it's kind of advantageous if every Everything sounds as homogenous and similar as possible. And Texas Hold'em just doesn't sound like anything else that's really on the radio. Though I do think compared to a lot of pop stars that try to have a country moment, Beyonce's clearly gone way out of her way to bring in enough country elements that it sounds so completely different from the rest of her catalog. And to a standard pop listener is like, oh, that's clearly a country song, which is much more than I feel like I could ever say for something by freaking BB Rexa or Old Town Road. And compared to all the other country fans, I just do not feel so riled up about this at all. I'm like, yeah, a big pop star wanted to make a country album. She's one of the biggest stars in the world. Of course, it will be a big topic of conversation. And then she'll go and make her next album and it will sound however that will sound. And given what Beyonce is doing with Renaissance, how there's kind of act one was about dance music, act two is about country. I'm sure act three or however far it goes, will kind of tackle another genre. That's just kind of cool, right? I don't know, people love being mad about stuff and I'm just outgrowing that phase of everything outraging me. Increasingly in life, I just kind of tilt my head and go, huh. That's interesting. Then I watch everyone fighting about it on the internet and I'm like, y'all have time. But all that said, I still stand by my original statement. I think it is fundamentally a pop structure and country sounding pop song, but there's also a lot of those that play on country radio. So I feel like it is selective 
outrage. But anyway, that's just kind of what that song is doing. And those are five kind of giant viral moments happening in the country space right now. I'd love to know if you're into them or if you're way out on them. And just, yeah, any of your thoughts of these rising bands, who's your favorite, who's not. Um, I do have merch. I never say this, but I do have merch. You can go to the link that's down in my description. I've changed up how I do it a little bit, but there's new Fiddle and Steel 2024 shirts because we always need more Fiddle and Steel. And that's it for me, guys. Love y'all. Be back soon with more content. Bye.